Welcome everyone to this interactive session of Brushes with Paint, as you can see our sign there. Um, it's an interactive and artsy Bible study that focuses on pain, struggles, and overcomings. I have two very special guests here with me today, Cindy Yonkman and Julie Bradford. They're neighbors of mine. I felt the Lord lead me to invite them to this introductory episode because they happened to be at my bedside in the hospital when the Lord birthed this idea into my very sick, sick body, but he spoke and whispered right about your pain. Now, when that happened, it was way back in November of 2019. That was pre-COVID-19 and pre all the struggle and pain we see our world in today. So it's very timely word when the Lord spoke this to me and I'm very appreciative of all that he's done for me throughout this last year. But prior to this hospitalization, I wanna tell you how the Lord actually confirmed that this was something he wanted me to do. I received a, a message from a former college acquaintance, Moose is his nickname, and he said he had been reading my online writings and postings and thought maybe I should consider writing a book or a memoir. And I, privately, it was good that he couldn't see my face or anything, but I was <laughs> surprised and shocked because first, I hadn't heard from him in 40 years. Oh, wow. And secondly, I had no desire to write about myself, no focus on me and anything. And I did tell him anything I write about would have to be about the Lord or some topic, but I just didn't see the memoir as something I would be interested in doing. Well, as the Lord would have it, when I was in that hospital bed and I literally had eye coverings on me at the hospital because I could not see, I could not see anything. Everything was dark and spinning. But when I was there and the Lord said, write about your pain, but don't just write about your pain. He said, write about your pain and how the cross, the word of God, the scriptures, dreams, revelations, supernatural events that the Lord caused to happen in my life, to bring me through, to deliver me out of, to help me and to heal me. And so that's what this Bible study is about. The pain met by God's intervention and help. So with that, I, got home from the hospital and hadn't written anything down, thought about it, but didn't really know and didn't know what it was gonna look like, the format. And another thing, as you two know, I was getting back to health. I couldn't even hardly walk, stand. And so that first things first, but I knew it was birthed in my spirit through a suffering, a time of suffering that I was to do this. Well, as the Lord would have it, I go to Sunday school the following Sunday and Jim and Deb Hopkins, wonderful believers, lead the class and they facilitate the class. And that particular morning, we, as is the custom of that class, he began to pray and we prayed about other people's needs. We were giving praise reports. And then he began to pray, Lord, help Robin write that book and let it get published. And I was so shocked. And so I couldn't wait for the, I couldn't even hardly focus on the class, but I went to him afterwards and said, Jim, why, why did you pray that? He said, I was kind of surprised myself, but I knew the Lord was leading it. So I knew that was a confirmation and God oftentimes will give confirmations to establish a new idea that he wants you to pursue. So with that, I get home and I brainstormed all like, oh, I had a word web where I had pain, struggles, despair, and I had all the things that the Lord had done through those struggles to bring me out of, to help me through, and at times deliver me miraculously from situations that I write about in this Bible study in my pain section. And so my pain section is the story that I will be sharing in sub, uh, subsequent episodes. And the cross is where scriptures and the revelations that God gave me to meet that pain, that struggle. And there are so many different types of struggles and so many different types of pain that I will be covering and it will cover my entire lifetime. And so I'm really excited about that. And the theme of this book, this, this Bible study is 
God works all things together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. That's in Romans 8, 28. It also reminds me of the adage, when life gives you lemons, squeeze and make lemonade. And you know, the Bible does say, taste and see that the Lord is good. And he is. And the one thing I love about the Lord, he has given us the Holy Spirit to comfort us. He is the known as the comforter. And he has been faithful. Even when I'm faithless, the Bible says, when we're faithless, he remains faithful and he's brought me through. So this Bible study is just a whole conglomeration of personal testimonies that when listeners or readers or guests come in, they can respond to, maybe when they read my struggle, they think of a struggle or a situation in their life and they will share their testimonies as they're going to do here in a few moments of how the Lord met them with a scripture, maybe a song he gave them to hold on to. Maybe it was a, a dream or a vision because God knows the end from the beginning. And so oftentimes he will show us the end at the beginning so that when we're going through something, we can endure it. Like the Bible says that Jesus endured the cross because he knew the joy that awaited him. So with that, I, I, I'm so excited to share that we are going to have many, many guests across the country, across the world that are going to be sharing their mementos from a time of darkness. And you know, I don't know about you, Cindy, or you, Julie, and adversity becomes the greatest teacher. However, I will tell you, every time I'm in it, and I come out, I said, Lord, I learned a lot and I was so close to you, but please don't let me go through that again because I, no one likes pain and no one likes struggle. But I'll tell you what, he teaches our hands to war in the spirit. And I thank him that he works all things together for good. And he does comfort. He, he is the God of all comfort and all compassion. And when we are, receive this comfort from the Lord, he tells us in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, that we are to take what God has done for us through the pain, the struggles met by the promises of his word and the cross, what he did there. And we're to take that and we're to share it with anyone else facing struggle or pain so that they understand there is a loving, compassion, compassionate and comforting God. So with that, I would love to hear uh, when I gave them the introductory page, you know, what came to mind? What did the Lord, the Holy Spirit lead you to share about today? And any memento from that, whether a song, a quote, uh, a word, uh, some people are visual storytellers. Um, why don't you share that with us, Julie, please? Sure. Um, thanks for having oh, me. Thanks I'm for so coming. Thanks for coming. Um, I just, as you're talking, you know, just so many things are, you know, just Bible quotes and things. I mean, I'm not a good Bible verse quote memorizer, but I know it's I know it's in there yeah, somewhere. Crazy yeah, I could, Lord. Yeah, I she lives it. She lives it. <laughs> I learn verses from her. I couldn't tell you exactly, um, you know, where they are, but just you know, hearing you talk just now and just having things, you know, as the Holy Spirit, you know, He will, He like you said, He will come in and and bring things to you. Um, you know, the biggest thing I think was. Um, that are tests or testimonies, you know, and, um, and there is purpose in our pain. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a part of Celebrate Recovery, as you know, which is a, a Christ-centered um, ministry for people with hurts, habits, hang-ups, pain. Um, Perfect. You, you know, it's not just, not just for, not just alcohol, not just drugs, it's for anxiety or, um, you know, whatever your pain is, whatever your hurt is, anger, abandonment, um, abuse, um, you know, I, I learned there um, that there are, you know, in the serenity prayer, it says hardships are the pathway to peace. And nobody wants to go through hardships, but I For have sure. seen over the years how it really does, you know, bring you, um, bring you peace and, and specific, and I wasn't even going to talk about this, but years and years and years and years ago when we lived in Florida, we were in a flood um, with one of the hurricanes. And um, I have seen how this COVID, that prepared me for peace during this COVID time. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no idea that that's, you know, and I was not even with the Lord at that time. You know, um, I spent 40 years of my life with my back to him. 
Um, and it really wasn't until three years ago that I finally, um, with, you know, through pain, was laid out and, um, you know, almost kind of like you are, not physically laid out like you were, but emotionally and um, spiritually just laid out. And, um, and so I, I saw, I was like, oh my gosh, I see how, um, you know, going through the flood um, then prepared for this time with the COVID because, you know, all my friends are stressed and freaking out and this and that. What are we going to do? I was like, you guys, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, the government will help. Things, you know, people will band together. Things will happen. God will work in people to, you know, it's going to be okay. So I did not plan on sharing that. But That's awesome. Okay. That's the Holy Spirit. We did pray. <laughs> we did pray we before pray. this this study yeah. together that the Lord, the Holy Spirit would have his way because, yeah. you know, he knows exactly what people need to hear. And so that thanks you. You're Continue. welcome. That's awesome. So what I did plan on sharing um, as I was reading, you know, Robin creates, um, created this lovely um, thing to, you know, to just kind of spark, um, spark memories and things like that. And so, um, as I was reading her, you know, her story and, um, you know, I think it is interesting that, you know, Cindy and I did get to be there with you. And, um, I think it's really inspiring to see how, what, what is coming out of that experience that you went through. And, um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful to be here. <clears throat> I'm grateful that I, um, was able to be there for you in that time. I didn't know what to do at that time, but just hold my hand. Hold your hand. I mean, you know, was... and sometimes, I mean, right? Like Jesus was a good listener and he yeah. just sat with people and he just was with people versus, you know, I, I'm a fixer. I like to, I want to fix things for everybody, yeah. you know, and which I'm learning through Celebrate Recovery. That is not my place. Um, but, you know, sometimes it is just to, to sit there and listen and help somebody breathe or right, let right. somebody cry or you don't have to fix it for right. them. You just have to be a safe place for them, you know, to share. And um, so I, I've really learned, you know, kind of what, what came up to my mind, um, you know, my personal pain, which was, um, you know, now seven years ago when I lost my father suddenly mm -hmm. um, to a stroke and... Um, and again, I was not with the Lord at that time, and it was devastating. And um, I really wish, you know, I had been with the Lord. I probably would have understood, you know, you know, how do I know now, or you know, what I know, or what is it, what I know now, if I had only known that, you know. And um, I, I could not be comforted at that time um, because I was not with the Lord. I did not know of all these things. I mean, I grew up Catholic, and I mean, I knew of the Lord, um, mm -hmm. but I was like, nope, I'm out. Um, and so, you know, and then fast forward, um, a few years later, um, you know, another, another traumatic experience was, um, going through an intervention with somebody in our family, which brought me to celebrate recovery, um, which then brought me to get to know Jesus and how he heals through these, you know, so even though, um, this person in our family, you know, he is not with Jesus and not with the Lord, but I see how, you know, that mess, you know, brought me to Jesus. Like I didn't personally go, <clears throat> wasn't the one struggling with the drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I see how God, you know, used that to, um, to bring me to get to know him. And, um, and then to start, you know, you, you're here starting this ministry, um, through your pain and, you know, way back when you know god um when my father when my dad died um i i felt this calling which again i, I wasn't with god so i didn't understand that it was right. him i he had I, his hand on you you know and it was to start this basically this horse ministry yes. you yes. know this equine Homeless. assisted wellness and to st I, at the time i was in that field um but i felt called to like start my own thing um and you know it took six years and other hardships and other things. And, um, and, you know, I really think God was like, um, you need to get to know me first, lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and so I just, you know, I, I, all those same questions. I don't want any attention on me. I don't want to yeah, do this. It, exactly. You got the wrong girl. I know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you got the wrong girl. And I just, you know, I think that's why my favorite person in the Bible is Moses. 
Because he was literally like, no, no, yeah, God, exactly. you got the it's wrong guy. Person. Yes. And, you know, because he stuttered or he, you know, he couldn't speak. And I just, I, I have, I have enjoyed getting to know the Bible in such a way to just see so many people in the Bible who are just regular people, well, regular yeah. people that God was like, yes, yes, you. And it's like, yes. oh, I'm, I'm just a nobody. Right. And now I love that song. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about the world, you know, about somebody that changed That's, my life. Yes. And, um, me, a person who rolled my eyes at people like me yeah. is now, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'll tell everybody. I'm like, I know, do, yeah. do you know Jesus? Do you know, you know, and it's just, it's just so bizarre. It is yeah. so bizarre for me to be in this life right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And to just Thank you. Step out in faith, right. you know, like you have done, um, is so inspirational because it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And, you know, he called so many people, so many ordinary people to step out in mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. Abraham moved yeah. to the strange place. Yeah. Moses, you got this. And it's like, and God, you know, and then, right, God gave Aaron to Moses to mm -hmm. help him. So he surrounds right. Right. you with people right. to help you. So I could talk for hours. So I, I know won't. because <laughs> you love the Lord and that's what I love. But you know, uh, Julia, several things came to mind from the Holy Spirit when you were speaking because you talked about a test. God gives a test, but then he gives you a testimony. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also heard you mention the word, I was, my life was a mess. Well, he, he's now giving you a mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. And then when we go through these painful struggles or trials, he gives us triumph as he, yes. we're overcomers. The Bible says that you know we overcame him by the blood of the lamb thanks be to god that jesus gave his life for our sins and shed his blood and rose again we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies yeah. and, and word of our testimony and you know what i'm excited to hear that because god from what you just shared when you said i didn't know i just felt this calling you know his goodness leads to repentance He's been good to you. Yes, yes you lost your so father. Good. Now you know, you know, the comforting power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just so grateful to hear that story, Julie. Um, I see you reek of the Lord. I mean, I'm going to get into that story of them being at the bedside and what they actually witnessed and heard me saying that later I knew what I was actually in the spirit, seated in the heavenlies. The Bible says we were there, but I was literally, my body was in spin and uh, not literally, but it felt that way, and out of control, sick. But I was calmed by the Holy Spirit and these two ladies holding my hand and praying and just being there. And they stayed with me the whole day and night, practically. <laughs> well, with that, let's go on to Cindy. Cindy, what do you have to share that you know that you thought of when you read the introductory statement? Well, I'm uh, going a little bit different. It's something that I did uh, that I would hope it would help somebody along the way. Praise the Lord. So I have picked a, out a scripture uh -huh. in Ephesians, uh -huh. and I will read that short scripture. Okay. It was written by uh, Paul to the Church of Ephesus, yeah. and it's about praying for spiritual growth, which is, it all falls into place, okay? So I would like just to read these couple little lines here. The creator of everything is heaven and on earth. I pray that this glorious, unlimited resources will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Praise God. Oh, oh yes, yes, that foundation. I, I love this. Um, what my question is here what can we do for spiritual growth I'm sure you have some ideas you know well read the Bible go to church but what about witnessing or helping mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. um, do either of you have any suggestions about going this, this journey to help people you want to start? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I. I she just shared that <laughs> very topic. She's like, yes. Let me know. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll share it you. for hours. <laughs> Trust me, um, she is a witness. I'll tell for hours. Um, 
I, you know, I, I was always stuck on like, you have to do this huge, huge thing or something big, something grandiose, you know, and, and, and really I, I, you know, especially with what's going on right now and stuff and, oh my gosh, how, how can I be help? How can I be of service? Mm -hmm. And, um, I really felt God say, just smile at people, you know, yes. like it can be so small as to just you know, if you're walking down the sidewalk or you're walking in a store or whatever, mm -hmm. even even if you're having masks on right now with COVID and stuff like that, you can you can smile with your eyebrows. You know, you can like, you can smile. <laughs> just, just, that's cool. <laughs> look up at people. You know, so of you practice. Down. So Julie, you practice <laughs> smiling practice with your eyes behind, eyes behind a mask. Yes. Well, you're gonna have to well. tutor us on that one. That's you know, just yeah. little things. You know, open the hold the door for someone. Look mm -hmm. up and smile. Wave at someone. Compliment someone. Um, I, I, I agree, and, and, and that's so true about your life. You are a blazing <laughs> torch for the Lord. And, and you know, Cindy, and I always see you talking to neighbors and greeting people. And I mean, for hours, you'll just speak with people. That's, that's yes. your gift. You're very hospitable. Yes. For me, I find in my life, I notice it flows. The living water flows for me when I'm really abiding. And I know that that may seem like insignificant but the bible jesus told us time and time again that we'll bear fruit if we abide in him and so i find that when i haven't been as much in the word or seeking his face or letting my mind and meditation be upon him that is a little more of a struggle as to when it just naturally flows and the holy spirit just kind of gives me divine appointments yeah when i'm seeking him first mm -hmm. in his righteousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. well he, it says in this prayer that Paul says for spiritual growth. It's because of the unlimited resources. God will empower us with the inner strength through his spirit. Amen. Amen. And when we do, our roots will go down into God's love and keep us strong. Okay. <clears throat> and with that, I would just like to tell a, a quick story. Okay. Um, and I have uh, a couple papers here that I will give you, you ladies. Oh, thank just you. Just to keep. Oh, thanks. Just to keep. Oh, They're I was going to pass it down. I thought but, there were two there. That's why I was pulling it apart. I wasn't yeah. keeping it for me. Yeah. And I, I don't have any notes, so this is just we because see. I remember these things. And you know, yeah. Cindy, I'll put these in the comments section so people can see them. Okay. Um, Later. Some 35 years ago, because I, I was in church, and... Um, so the minister asked me to give a message to the children. I thought, okay, I'll see what I can do. You know, so when it was time, when it was time, I, in the middle, I, I went down from the altar and I called the children to come. Just like Jesus. Yeah. Yes, and I had, I had like oh, 10 or 12 little kids around me, you know, and I thought, okay, I gotta tell them the story. <laughs> Okay, um, it goes, that scripture talks about the roots will go into the, but I did not use that scripture for the children. I, I just talked to them basically. But these papers that I have drawn up tell me about the roots of something. Cool. And the very first page here talks about the buds, the buds of the flowers, how they bloom out. Mm. for us to bloom out yes mm -hmm. well that's yes. that's cool mm -hmm. so you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna just do you mind passing me a pencil maybe the one with the b yeah that's fine i'm gonna write on here you said bloom out yeah the first uh, picture bloom out yes it's okay. the, the buds the flower yeah okay mm -hmm. and the next page yeah. is the flower now what we learn is back many hundred years ago in in france in in europe they saw these dandelions okay and they they thought they were beautiful they are sometimes we don't think that we <laughs> yeah, don't America. think that we're trying to know. but these are but pictures are of dandelions that i found um, on my computer uh -huh. and i talked to the kids about these dandelions how beautiful they are but in our country People see them as weeds. Yes. They would like to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple things I always remember about the weed. These weeds, they're actually flowers, and we need to look mm -hmm. at them 
as flowers. And hopefully, um, as we go out today, there's dandelion greens all over the place in the yard, okay? Well, I found this one and my husband cut it out for me. There. Do you want me to hold it up over here for this, yeah. everyone to see? These, these are the beautiful dandelion flops. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But one of the things about dandelions is if you dig it up, the roots, because back to scripture, are very, very it's deep. True. So these roots. That's why we that, can't give them out. <laughs> yes. Pull this out. Wow. Um, <clears throat> this, these roots, as you can see, are very strong. Let me, let me pass it over and I'll pass it right back to Yeah, Julie. there's a special name for that. Um, the roots there. Yeah. When a root goes straight down yeah. to the ground. And a dandelion, the roots do go strong. right straight down. They aren't crooked. They go right down. Yeah. And in this package, there's actually one little one uh -huh. and then this is this big one mm -hmm. the little one you can see how tiny it is right mm -hmm. okay so if we can relate to the dandelion mm -hmm. the flower or the weed whatever you want to call it as the roots going deep into the ground when we think of that we want the roots we want to feel the roots deep from our Lord that Amen. we Amen. That we were down there yes. So anyway, this is my beautiful plant. <laughs> Can you convince all of our neighbors that, you know, we should just let dandelions be, grow? Because they are beautiful, yes. especially when they get the, what are they, milkweed type things on yeah. top. But um, yeah. Well, but, the dandelions grow, grow bigger. Um, if they're up against the house or up against a fence, mm -hmm. rather than out in a yard. Mm -hmm. These yeah. were up against the fence. Wow. Here. But as you can see, what are, what are they good for for us? It's an example of us. If you can look at this root here right. and this one, it's got all these little things coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that actually, if you turn it sideways, it almost looks like a branch. You know, it's where very it very strong. Yeah, yes. and it reminds me of when uh, the Lord says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Yeah. He who abides in me. This, you know, that, will bear much fruit. Yes. Um, we actually broke the bottom off. It's actually longer than this. Uh -huh. Wow. But if we can remember that all these little things come out, those are messages that we can share. Yeah. And that's awesome. Here, that's an awesome visual yeah. picture. Here's some, uh, yes. here's some bigger ones. You know, and you can find them. I think it, it's fun to dig up a day in the line. These are all these. This is people. We're all uh, called to share this message. Yes, Amen. Part of the body. Yes. Part of the body. Yes. We're yes. members of the body. But, um, I, I'll tell you though. People That's can powerful. go. People can go around and look at this plant growing, mm -hmm. so they pull it out. But that doesn't work. If and it it shows on the picture I have. Which one's um, in here? Um, it's it's back where they. Uh, well, I don't. Know. Is it with the lion's face? No. Oh. But um, if you you break it off, or you you know, little kids like to do that because sooner or later they get the blossoms. Yeah. It's this one. Yeah, and this, this one. This one too. We use this the blow. Is, yeah. yeah. Yes, this is the blossom wishes of the the, the uh, dandelion that gradually goes into um, this special thing. And if you look at this very closely, and this is where children blow. They love to blow these. Yeah. Yes. I did as a kid. But yeah. if you look, this is a close-up. And these are all the seeds coming out. Yes. Right, right. To every little fuzzy thing, and you see them blowing in the wind. Yeah. It's because it's still there. The, yeah. the dandelion itself is still there. And we like to, um, if, if we would go and pull them out, or we would st step on them, uh, we get angry with all the dandelion plants in our yard. <laughs> um, step on it, pull it, you know, clip off the top. You know what? 
the dandelion always comes back. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, right, right. this picture shows buds that come in this dandelion wow. way down here in the middle. So if I will go out and cut all this off, yeah, I can look down mm -hmm. and there's some little buds coming up. Yeah. In a matter of a couple days, you got dandelions yeah. again. So you you can't kill that completely. Yeah. Because whenever you don't like it or you get rid of it, it's going to come back. Because it's, it's rooted. It's mm -hmm. going to come back. It's rooted. It's because they it is rooted in the deep ground, just like Jesus says, you it's the root the end to Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're rooted and grounded in him. Yes. And that's a scripture. And that really true that I love that analogy because in all honesty, if I hadn't been rooted and grounded in the Lord, I don't know where I would be today. Yeah. Just like you were saying, I you know, it would have been different, I know, that it had the Lord and he was there. I know. You know, but yeah. but it would have been different for you because you weren't comforted, you felt. And and I I, I mm -hmm. think that there's a natural thing anyway, if we lose our parents, we're going to be extremely sad unless the Lord, you know, causes us to be comforted and happy you can and see joyful. This root going deep yeah. in the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are if we can put our roots deep, deep into the roots of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now something um, casual about this plant. I call it the beautiful plant, you know. Um, is this very last picture yeah. on the page. And I will, again, put these on the comment section. These, this, these plants in the beginning are from Europe. Oh, yeah, and yeah. they use these plants for medicine and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Salads. Yeah. Yeah. Salads. Yeah. If you check on the internet that you can use these for, it's just incredible. Yeah. But if you look at each each one, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see these leaves that always look the same. They do not change, just mm -hmm. like, okay? But what this represents on this picture is the tooth of a lion. Mm -hmm. That's what these are. They're shaped like a tooth of a lion, and that's where they get dandy lion. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and so this picture right here, I just happened to find this. It's just the lion's um, face in the the lion's face blossom. in the blossom because it's it's blooming out the lion's face will never change see that mm -hmm. um, next time you go out in your yard look for one mm -hmm. and you'll see these lions too that's the way they're shaped yes. nice that, lesson in there. yeah I know that very came cool from, from Europe yeah but when I told the story I gathered little kids around and told told them the story um, how, what they're shaped like, what happens to it and everything. And so I closed with a little prayer. Right. And when the church was over, this lady came up to me and I, I know her um, from Sunday school or I didn't know her real well personally, but she, after explaining the story about you can't, you can step on them, you can smash them, whatever, they're going to come back. She said to me, she says, I understand now, okay? She told me that, and I thought about that. I thought, I told these kids about this. Maybe that lady needed to hear that. Yes. Yes. Amen. She did. Okay? Because no matter what we go through, when we're knocked down, we're not destroyed. Maybe. Yes. Um, and yes. this happened again. Um, the church has upward basketball for kids mm -hmm. and at that time uh, my oldest son Mike was um, it was up to him to get people to talk mm -hmm. to share something um, anything he wanted to share about in halftime mm -hmm. so he called me up and he says well it's your turn I'm like, oh, <laughs> <gosh."> <laughs> you know? so I said well okay and I thought I want to share this story with the adults and any children by be in there, any adults sitting on the pew, you know, down mm -hmm. uh, around the bleachers and stuff. And um, I pulled out a dandelion, and this was about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I pulled out a dandelion, it was up against our house frame. Mm -hmm. The roots was like this. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I saved, I thought, 
I can't believe the roots would be that deep. The roots on this would be deeper, but we, yeah, I finally give up on it. <laughs> so I told that same story to the church and all the people that were in, in the uh, gymnasium uh, um, mm -hmm. about the story. And I really didn't think too much about it. I thought, okay, the kids will understand that. But you know, about two or three years ago, I was having a dinner at Bob Evans. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think that I did that maybe eight years, nine years ago, mm -hmm. um, this young man came up to me, and he's about 40. After we ate and we had dinner, he came up to me and he said, you shared that story about the dandelions. And I said, yes, I did. That was about eight years ago. Oh, my gosh. And this was about two years ago, maybe two to three years ago. And he told me, he said, I just want to tell you one thing. You changed my life <gasps> by that story. Oh. And I will always remember that, even though it was 1983 that I gave that story to these little kids. Wow. But I never forgot it. <clears throat> and when the woman says, I understand now. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I knew what she meant. Um, and when this man, a clear blue, he was having having dinner, and he, afterwards he wakes up, wow. and yeah. he came up and he says, I want you to know you changed my life. That's incredible. Well, you know, yes. there's a scripture that came to mind when you were just sharing that, where it says, you know, share good things with him who teaches. And so that's what the Lord allowed to come back to you. Because oftentimes, you know, people need a visual image. Like, mm -hmm. they need to, mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus spoke Jesus in parables. Mm -hmm. And so he told stories by using earthly things that we could understand yes. and connect with. So that's hugely important. Mm -hmm. what, I lo what I thought about that, too, is interesting when you shared all that. And thank you for that. Uh, you brought it to a place where it can be stepped on. It can be, yeah. and it's, it's hated. hated. I, it's hated. Yeah. You know, Jesus yeah. said, because they hated me, they're going to hate you too. Exactly. So that's part of the painful journeys that we have. Because Jesus, very important to realize that he, he didn't say, like, one time I kept praying, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. And something came like a persecution like you couldn't believe from mm -hmm. someone I loved. And I remember driving the car crying, Lord, why did that happen? And gently he, he whispered to my spirit, you wanted to know me? Because you see, like, yes. he, you know, when Paul wrote, like, we have to know the fellowship of his sufferings as well. So sometimes we go through things where we're hated or not liked, yes. like the dandelion. We're stepped on and all that, but that's okay because we have a comforter. And, and most people think as the dandelions, you know, you're covering in your yard and everything. But you take a small child to go out, and this has happened, go out, pick the dandelions, and take them to mom. Here, I brought your Yeah, I've done yes. that. I did that when yeah. I was little. Yes. Yeah. And, and so I thought when I started this story, it would relate to these children yeah. about, you know, the dandelions. Right, right. Well, as it turned out, it did speak to some yeah. adults. About the Lord, yeah. And I, awesome. I was the really roots. pleased that he told me that it had changed his life. It really made me right, feel good. Right. Awesome. So we got to keep sharing, right? Yes. When you shared something before, like, now I can't stop talking about the Lord. <laughs> you know, we have to look at, like, when Jesus said, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news or preach the gospel. And, and that's a story I'm going to be talking about later. But just to let you know that that visual representation, just your testimonies, is what we're going to be sharing in subsequent Bible studies. Yes. I do want to bring it back to this little visual that, uh, that I created, and it's it's going to be on the comment section, and it's got the cross with the nails, because, you know, Jesus went through uh, the worst kind of suffering, but, yes. but he did it for us. Yes. It says, you, you out there, and you in here, and me, read, reflect, journal, and connect. Draw, dance, paint, create, and sing, glorify, and testify of Jesus, our King. Trust, that's that root, you know, you got to, you got to just trust and, and just keep, you know, let your roots grow deep into him by abiding. Trust, comfort, and encourage others. That's what you were speaking about. And you were speaking about the children. Mm -hmm. Claim his promises, your sisters and brothers. I would, I would like just to add something. Yeah, go next ahead. Next time, the next time you go out in your yard and you find 
a dandelion. No matter if it's bloomed or not, because the, the blooms will come right out of the top of that. But right. you can look in here and see all these little bud things growing. And sometimes it'll be more than just one flower or one weed. But if you take the time to pick a leaf and look at the look at the teeth of the lion, mm -hmm. that's how it got its name in Europe. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you can ask yourself, are you doing everything you can? Are you doing what, what is available or what you can to grow? Your roots will go deeper in Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow, right. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. And that is awesome because <clears throat> what you spoke about, and I wanted to pick a visual memento to remind me of the time when the Lord birthed this idea. And we will be doing a lot of artsy things in here as well. This was just the kickoff, the starting point. When I lost my sight, I was in complete darkness, the absence of light. I saw like a jaundice kind of yellow. I would go in and out of like dark black to a jaundice yellow. While I was so sick, I, I couldn't see. But in the spiritual realm, and I'm going to talk about that at the next episode when I hopefully you both can come back. And that's going to be a couple months from now where you were with me and the Lord showed me something in the spirit. He gave me sight mm -hmm. where I could see, you know, I could see again. So this little mirror is a reflection. We are to be the reflection, the image of Christ. We are made in his image, but we're to be reflecting Christ. As you said, you, we all want to do that. We want to be a sweet aroma to God of Jesus Christ. So whether you do not know the Lord as your personal savior, and the Bible says, you know, he loves you. He died on a cross for you. He shed his precious blood for you and for me, and he rose again. And you know what? He is the son of God. He is God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. So whether you may not see or you're in a fog, know this, that he will give you spiritual understanding. He will give you spiritual sight so that you can make it through any painful struggle in your lives. And with that, we're going to close with a, a little communion right here. This is grape juice. <laughs> and I'm going to, because, you know, Jesus... When he, the Bible says when he was facing, it was just the night of his betrayal, as a matter of fact, when he brought up the idea of what we are to do to remember him. The night of his betrayal. The first thing Jesus did was he gives thanks. There are so many times when I've gone through pain and I've gone through struggle that literally my heart was breaking, I was sobbing, but I would walk around like giving the sacrifice of praise. And the Bible says to do that. So Jesus that's what he did the night he knew what he was about to go through and he had already prophesied about that but he the night, very night of his betrayal he he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said this is my body do this in remembrance of me and then after giving thanks breaking the bread giving it to them and say do this in remembrance of me he was portending his death on the cross and then after they ate supper, it says he did the same thing and he gave them a cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink it and remember me. And he said, do this often because it was telling of his death. He knew what he was going through. He knew the painful journey ahead, but he endured it. He endured the cross for the joy that awaited him. And so we endure, we go through, and we are overcomers because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So with that, let's take the bread. And I have, I don't know if you would take the bread. Mm -hmm. Do that in remembrance of the Lord. Thank you. Let's eat and remember and thank him for his body that he gave on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. And this is grape juice, but this is his blood. It says, when you drink the cup of the new covenant, his blood was shed for our sins. My sins, your sins, and we're all sinners. Saved by the grace of God. And let's drink this cup of the new covenant. 
that Jesus gave us when he died on a cross and he rose again. Amen. And with that, dear brothers and sisters, my dear sisters here, who I really love and am so grateful for, whatever you're going through, remember, he will never leave you or forsake you. He's always there with us. And when we prayed just before this Bible study, Julie, you prayed something and you said, you know, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he's in the midst thereof. He's here and he will never leave you and forsake you. For with that, we say until next time, and we're going to try to do this every Friday. We say until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Thank you. And have a wonderful and blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen.